Greetings, I am Herbert Erbaderb, and today I'm going to build some trucks. And as you've probably already figured out, the particular trucks I'm going to build are these plastic soldier company Russian gas trucks. Is it meant to be read as gas like a word, or is it meant to be said G-A-Z? I don't suppose it really matters. It really does matter! Anyway, these are plastic wargaming models in 15mm, or if you prefer, 1 100th scale, and there are 10 of them in the box, though that is 10 vehicles in total, and there are two varieties, so you can build 5 Gaz AA trucks and 5 Gaz AAA trucks, and not 10 of one version. The back of the box is mostly occupied by a sprue guide and some instructions. This is what we get instead of the usual sheet inside the box which would contain the same information. I actually think I prefer the sheet of paper, but this is fine and it works well enough. The box also mentions that decals are not included and can be purchased separately, but I think for trucks like this you could easily get away without using any decals at all. Inside the box we find five of these sprues molded in a grey plastic, and you shouldn't be at all surprised to find out that they look pretty much exactly like the sprue diagram on the box. They're nice and neatly molded, and I couldn't find any errors or defects. I believe this is still a pretty new kit, so the neatness of the sprues isn't all that surprising. Also, in my experience, Plastic Soldier Company stuff is usually pretty neat and good quality, so I would say this is par for the course. Each sprue builds two trucks, one AA and one AAA version, and as best I can tell, the only visible differences are in the wheels. The AA version only having two drive wheels, while the AAA has four. And the underside of the cargo tray thing is a bit different as well. Otherwise they're pretty much the same, and go together the same way. I'm no expert on any kind of truck, so I can't tell you if the details are right and the proportions are exact or whatever, but I can tell you that these models look good. Also, it's a good idea to remember that these are gaming models in quite a small scale, so there are going to be some omissions of detail, both to make them sturdy enough to handle in a game, and because certain details are just too small to be worth replicating in this scale. Ok, so the sprues look good, and that's all you get in the box. Let's start gluing bits of plastic to other bits of plastic. It seems the instructions want the cab built first, and why not? An exact procedure isn't given, but I figured starting with the rear wall would be a good idea. There's a fair bit of play in this part, so it seems like a good idea to get the side parts on quickly to ensure things line up neatly. This is slightly fiddly, but not too tricky. We just need to do a bit of nudging, add a little pressure, and of course glue so the glue guard won't smite us and also so that the parts will stay together. The windshield and hood part comes next, and it doesn't quite drop right into place, but almost. You may need to do a little bit of fiddling, but this does go on pretty easily. Make sure to apply pressure to take care of any gaps that might form. I had a bit of a gap between the hood and side part on the left, though it wasn't anything too bad. Just something to be careful of. The roof comes next, and I wasn't super sure about the gap along the back where it contacts the wall, but it seems like it's meant to be that way, so I guess I'll just deal with it. It looks quite roofy anyway. Hmm, maybe that's not the correct term. Anyway, the radiator and headlights part comes next, and this more or less just plops right into place. I apply a little pressure for good measure, and just like that we've got ourselves a cab. On the underside I glue this bumper. It has a big chonky piece of keying that should make it pretty obvious how it goes on. When that's in place I add the front axle. As you can see this has a sort of cylindrical nub on it that faces towards the rear and lines up with the other similarly shaped bits of detail on the underside. There is a little bit of play here so nudge it until it looks like it's nice and straight. With that in place we've got somewhere to attach the front wheels, and why not attach those now? This is pretty easy to do, just make sure you've clipped the correct wheels from the sprue. There is a little bit of play here too, not too much, it's just you might need to do a bit of nudging to make sure the wheels are relatively straight. The rear wheels come next, and brace yourselves for this revelation, they go on the rear axle or axles. Oh really? No, they don't. Wait, yes they do, really. These go on similar to the front wheels, in that you might find you need to do a bit of nudging to get them on straight. The main difference is that there are two tyres per wheel here, so obviously make sure that you're using the correct parts and have them around the right way, and this really is very easy. 
The assembly is, unsurprisingly, the same if you are building the AA or AAA version. It's just the AAA version has more wheels, as we've already established and you can see here. Next, I add the cargo holdy bit, which is, as we all know, the technical term. I start by gluing the bed into place. I wasn't totally sure if I was putting this around the right way, or if there even is a right way, and it seems a bit different between the AA and AAA versions, but it's not too hard to put into place. For some reason I did seem to have a bit more trouble with the AAA version, though maybe it's because I was quite tired at the time. Who knows? You're rambling again? No, you're rambling. I add the front wall next, and this was a little bit tricky to get into place, but our good friends glue, pressure and nudging were all there to help. The sides and rear all go into place in short order, and it's pretty simple to get those on. Obviously if they're not quite lining up straight a little bit of nudging should be done, but there's not going to be anything especially challenging here. When I was building the AA version, it didn't seem like the side parts had a particular way they should go on, but when I got to the AAA it did seem they had a specific way to go on. The parts are numbered in a particular way on the instructions, but on the box it's much too small for me to read, even with relatively good eyesight. I can only see the actual numbers if I zoom in on a picture of the box. So I guess if you do follow the instructions, it's easy, and if you don't, it's not. Makes sense, right? It would be nice if the instructions were a bit more clear there. I suppose now I know for when I get around to building the other 8 trucks in the box. The final touch is the canvas cover for the cargo area, and I think this is quite a nice piece. I would say this is optional, especially if you want to put a load in the back of your truck, but I really think it looks better with this in place, and there's no plank detail on the inside of the wall parts anyway. And there we have it, two gas trucks, one AA and one AAA. You can see just how similar they look, and that's obviously why I didn't show myself building both trucks. You should have built all ten! Maybe you should just watch this video ten times. Anyway. The 15mm scale Russian gas trucks by the Plastic Soldier Company are now completed, and I think you'll agree, they look pretty nice. They're obviously not a super detailed display model, and if you were expecting that, you were doing it wrong, but they do look pretty good. They'll obviously look better when they're painted, but they will still function on the gaming table unpainted. They just won't win as much because as everybody knows, painted models fight better. Anyway, I think this is a really nice little kit. It's probably pretty obvious that it was quick and easy to put together, but I'm going to say it anyway. It was quick and easy to put together. Ah, oh, you're so funny, Herbert! Funny looking! Yep, it's true. Sometimes a nice simple build is a relaxing thing to do, and sometimes if you need to whip together a force in a hurry, it's exactly what you want. In my case it was the simple relaxing build I wanted. I guess I just don't really have a lot to say about these. It's a good kit, it gets a hearty thumbs up from me, and if you're interested in seeing more Plastic Soldier Company stuff, I do have a few more of their kits recently added to my stash, so stick around if you want to see that. If you want to see more Plastic Soldier Company stuff before it's a video here on YouTube, I do build pretty much everything on this channel live on stream. You'll find a link to my Twitch channel in the description below. Give me a follow and come hang out when I do the builds. It'll be fun times, or else. I've been keeping my schedule pretty up to date on Twitch, so if you want to know what's coming, that would be the place to find out. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put those in the comments section below. If you've built one, or ten of these, or any other cool models and you want to share, why not plop by our friendly Discord community and show us some pictures. We'd love to see what you've done. And if you've not already done so, why not subscribe, follow, ring the bell, consider becoming a patron if you want to see my videos a bit early, or maybe just come say hi on Discord or Twitch next time I'm live. And if you're feeling really helpful, why not share this video with your friends and enemies or anybody you think might get something out of it. You can find links to all of my things like social media in the description below. And as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other, have a nice day, and thanks for watching. Farewell.